My name is Benjamin Akako. Thank you for staying for the AM News. Now, in our first story, it's been more than two years since Senior Lands Administrative Officer and mother of two, Rodeline Amwadako, went missing. Her husband, Dr. Wilberforce Agri of the Petroleum Department of KNUSD, is on trial at the Kumasi High Court, accused of kidnapping his wife. Now, the family of 32-year-old Rodeline has announced a 100,000 Ghana City reward for information leading to the location of their relative. Or Heming Tewia of our security desk visited the family house where devastated relatives remain hopeful of seeing their missing kinsman alive. Dear Lord, my father, my daughter Rhoda got missing in 2021, August. A tearful and distraught mother seeks answers to finding her missing daughter described as a breadwinner of the family. Cecilia Obeniwa Apia, the mother of Mrs. Rodalyn Amwadako, is a former headmistress of the Krobo Girls Senior High School, currently on retirement. Traumatized by the disappearance of her daughter, she looks up to a divine intervention to suit her anguish. It has been two years of sorrow, two years of expectation, expecting that I'll get up one day, then I'll hear that Rhoda has come. I've waited and waited and waited, and it's two years plus now, and to no avail. It has not been easy at all as a mother, the angels of God. I'm praying that they bring her from wherever Rhoda has been kept to me so that it will be a Christmas bonus for me. Police prosecutors told the Asoka District Court in 2022 their preliminary investigations linked Dr. Weberforce Agri of the Petroleum Department of KNUST to an altered kidnapping note. Police also accused him of using his wife's phone to distribute test messages from a spot near his KNUSC campus home. But he was discharged by the court in February 2022 and subsequently re-arrested to face new charges at the Kumasi High Court where he was subsequently granted bail. Two other suspects, Justice Apia and Yao Amwatin, said to have sold and bought a phone belonging to Mexican Rodalyn Amwadako, are also standing trial. But the family of Rodalyn is courting public support to help find their kinsman. I am appealing to Ghanaians. I'm so on my knees that whoever has heard of where Rhoda has been kept, whoever had a clue as to where Rhoda is, and whoever was involved in Rhoda's kidnap, please, you should all let me know. Help me find Rhoda. Madame Obiniwa says the family will reward anyone who volunteers information to help locate her daughter. When you have any information that will lead us to the whereabouts of Rhoda, please, you can use these numbers. 053-56-312-78. This is the second number. 53 Five five eight three five one three. Whoever helps us to find Rhoda, we have a hundred thousand Ghana cities ransom for that person. Meanwhile, the Kumasi High Court is expected to hear the case on November 13, 2023, after suffering several adjournments from Accra for Joy News. My name is Ohimi Interior. We move on now and talk about Deputy Minister for Health, Mahama Asay Shaini, who has assured that government has not abandoned the construction of the third phase of the Tamale Teaching Hospital. He says though the project has delayed, government remains committed in ensuring that it is executed. He spoke at the 50th anniversary celebration of the Tamale Teaching Hospital. 
The 50th anniversary celebration of the Tamale Teaching Hospital was on the team TTH at 50, changing the narrative, repositioning for excellence. The Deputy Minister of Health, Mahama Asay said, he said government was committed to the project, even though it had delayed. I wish to assure you that the government has not abandoned the history expressing the of the government in the We remain committed to the project, although it has delayed. The investment in health infrastructure, resources, and policies is higher on the government's program to enable the sector to strive and serve its purpose. How they have made substantial contributions to the status of hospitals, notably the government teaching hospital. Notably the government teaching hospital. The overlord of Dabon, Yana Abukari II whose speech was read on his behalf by the chief of Zangbalan, Dr. Yakubu Mahama, commended the staff of the Tamale Teaching Hospital, but also raised concerns over the lack of leadership at the facility. Of course, it goes without saying that at certain times, the health workers, workers have not been their best. That's led to unfortunate outcomes. The absence of the needed inputs to deliver quality services have more often than not been the cause of these unfortunate outcomes. This you can understand because of the delay in receiving reimbursement for the National Health Insurance Authority. But there have also been occasions when the fall rests squarely on the health worker due to inadequate skills, negligence, and greed. It is also worth noting that over a long period of time, health worker apathy and indiscipline have been the order of the day. This kind of indiscipline has attracted various reactions from the people of Tamale, including anonymous letters, petitions to Bureau Palace, and invasions of the premises of the hospital. These acts of indiscipline by the health workers are engendered by the interferences of political leaders, chiefs, and influential personalities in our society. But they have also been cared considerably by a strong, courageous, and strict leadership, which has been lacking in this hospital for a long time. The Northern Regional Minister Shani Al Hassan Shaibu said the region was the highest beneficiary of the Agenda 111 project, with the Northern Region receiving 10 of the hospitals. The As you are no doubt aware, the flagship project of our government in the health sector is the Agenda 111, which was launched on the 17th of August. Officer of the TTH, Dr. Atiku Adam, on his part said the TTH is the third largest tertiary facility in the country, taking care of the five regions of the north, including the OT and Bono regions. It provides tertiary level care for clients across the five regions of Canada, the five northern regions, including OT and Bono. Now, nearly 4,000 persons, mainly peasant farmers and fisher folk in six districts in the Oti region, have been affected by flooding of the Volta Lake as a result of the spillage. Some residents in the Krachi East municipality have been sharing their ordeals with our correspondent, Peter Sinu. 
According to the OT Regional NADMO Director Edward Kuma, 3,874 residents in six districts in the OT region have been affected by the flooding of the Volta Lake, which was as a result of the flooding of the lake upstream. Although the spillage of the Akosombo Dam did not directly affect the residents, the flooding upstream which occasioned the spillage did. The mostly peasant farmers and fisher folks have lost their homes and farms down along the lake before the flooding began. Raymond is one of the affected persons at Oruto in the Kratcher West municipality. We used to farm along this stretch. This year we cultivated some crops, cassava, maize and granites, but all have been destroyed by the flood. This building belongs to my father, so some of us had to relocate to high ground. We are stranded because all our food crops have been destroyed. We now have to buy food. He said similar incident happened 13 years ago. Okay, about 13 years now. Mm -hmm, 13 years now. And it just see. Huh. the same thing. Abraham is another victim to the Volta Lake flood. He has lost his home and farms to the flood. Our building and other belongings have been destroyed. This makes it difficult for us to do any work. Our farms have all been destroyed. The residents also have the flood and its attendant contaminations to deal with. We drink the lake without treatment and this makes our children sick. It is in this regard that World Vision Ghana has stepped in to support the victims of the flood with some health and hygiene items worth 24 million Ghana cities. The NGO has also procured 200 pieces of mattresses and 1,500 pieces of exercise books for distribution. More importantly is the access to potable water in these hard times. After a purifier was dropped in the fresh water and stirred for about 10 minutes, this is the result. The expression on the face of the assembly member tells it all. Here is his advice for the residents. The true demonstration, no, and a man who say, Senna, eh, and sooner, yeah, no, no, eh, yeah, 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 poisonous, am I? Me too, you know, for say, it was through the demonstration I realized we were drinking dead. I advise all those along the lake to rely on the boreholes provided for them. Ivan Abwaji is the manager for World Vision Ghana in the region. He tells us why they have stepped in to bridge the gap. When you come to the OT region, uh, you will realize that the situation is no different from what we are experiencing downstream in terms of the Volta region area. And so um, we decided that uh, if, as much as we are, we are responding to the needs of those at that part, we will also uh, ensure that we provide some emergency items for the people in the OT region as well. Residents along the lake in Krachi East, Krachi West, Krachi Nchumuru, Biakuye, Nkwanta South and Nkwanta North districts are affected by the flooding. There is the fear of food scarcity in these areas in the ensuing year. Peter Sen for Joy News. Let's celebrate excellence now. And the words continue to be an embodiment of media excellence in Ghana. Those are the words and the congratulatory message from Stambik Bank as they celebrated multimedia for sweeping the ultimate prize and the highest number of awards at the recent Ghana Journalists Awards. 
Now, the bank becomes the latest institution to appreciate the achievements of multimedia in the just ended 27th GJA Awards. The multimedia group swept the ultimate award after Eraste Sasaridonko was crowned the PAV Ansa Journalist of the Year. To appreciate this achievement, a team from Stambic Bank paid a courtesy call on Multimedia Thursday to spend some quality time with the awardees and management. The bank, as part of its congratulatory gesture to the awardees, gifted them citations and gift vouchers. The Multimedia Group continues to receive recognition for the astounding laurels some members of staff attained at the 27th GJA Awards. Eight journalists from the group received various awards at the event. In view of this achievement, financial partner to the brand Stambeck Bank on Thursday visited the team to congratulate the awardees. Speaking to join News after a short event, Executive Head of Brand and Marketing at Stambeck Bank, Mauko Afejoni, said multimedia has become an embodiment of excellence and therefore urged the team members not to relent on their efforts to maintain high standards and quality content. We came here to celebrate with multimedia. Decades of excellence is what multimedia has come to embody. And as one of our very most um, important partners, we had to be here to appreciate and to applaud what multimedia has done. I mean, if you look at the spread and the spectrum of the awards, the fact that multimedia was at the top and equally critically has become a very important pipeline for talent. It's one that the nation needs to celebrate. Uh, as a brand, we say that Ghana is our home, we drive our growth, and one of the most critical growth partners is the media. And to that extent, if you have an institution like multimedia playing the role so cardinal to the development of this country in such an impressive manner, it's only primary and it becomes an imperative for us to applaud, acknowledge, and encourage multimedia. General Manager of Multimedia, Fifi Comson, on behalf of the group, expressed appreciation to the Stambeck Bank for the heartwarming recognition of the hard work of the staff of multimedia. It's exciting that our banking partners will recognize the hard work of our team here at Joy News. I believe and trust that this relationship is for the long haul. Of course, Stambeck has been a partner for so many years and we are really excited about this opportunity to break bread with them. I mean, our partnership over the period, over the years, has been great and I believe that this even uh, is the icing on the cake, making it even better. Speaking on behalf of all the awardees, the PAV and Sun Journalist of the Year, Erastus Saradonko said the recognition from the reputable bank will motivate them in their journey to positively impact society through journalism. I think it's an encouragement uh, to the business that I represent and work for. And um, it's an honor to be dining with such big people from Stambeck Bank. So we say I equal to Stambeck Bank for associating themselves with this brand for what we do and will forever be grateful. It also encourages me to do more. Um, so far, I've also received invitations from schools that want to uh, view or want to show my documentary, especially The Poison for Gold, live to students to encourage them to help in the fight against illegal mining. So I must say uh, we are grateful to all such patrons and they should continue to also um, live and work with the multimedia brands. The gesture from Stambeck Bank is expected to strengthen the partnership between the two brands for their mutual benefits. And it's on that celebratory note that we cap off the news. But stay with us up next, the news review.